So <coughs> I'm back again um, with a new target this time. As you can see, my face is really red. It's hell at the moment in Malta, above 40 degrees every day. And I work outside, so I always get sunburned in the summer. But anyway, um, today I'm going to use the SV48P with a narrowband filter, the SV220. I'm going to go for the Cave Nebula. Um, it's uh, somewhere around the sickness region. I read, I have to search the coordinates, but it's a sharp less object. Basically, it's around the um, near the bubble lobster nebula, that, that kind of area. But I'm hoping to get a full night. Um, the sky looks incredibly clear. It's very hot. Very, um, uh, at night, it will go down a bit, so it won't be that hot. And I have the cooler, don't forget. So. I have a cold camera to play with. So it's still, as you can see, light. We have about three hours more for darkness. I'm gonna set up quickly and we'll see where it takes us. Okay, so I set up. And um, today I tried my best to do as clean as possible wiring. So I did a rubber band here. And as you can see, I passed the wires of the camera here going down everything connected this rubber banded here as well everything connected to the usb powered usb i have 178 405cc the 48p everything is balanced i'm using two weights one 2.2 kilos and 1.75 kilograms and this is about 3, 3.5 kilograms, I think. Um, the whole telescope with, with the guide camera. I think the 48P is about 2.7 kilograms, if I remember well. So at the camera and the guide camera, and the guide scope might be 3.5, 3.7, I think. So well within the limits. The limits of the GTI is 5 kilograms, as you know. I'm going to use this later as a light shield because uh, there's my neighbor here um, if she turns on the lights I have this to block the lights and we'll see how it goes and as you can see it's very clear blue skies all around the cave nebula will rise somewhere around there this is the north side Polaris will be there the cave nebula about there um, this side of the sky is the best for me to image because there's less light pollution here. The light pollution is that way. That way is the Eagle Nebula, Lagoon, and all that stuff. And uh, there's a lot of light pollution from the south of Malta. But you know. And it's very, very hot. It's still hot. I'm sweating like a pig while setting up this stuff. We'll see when it comes dark. Okay, so I'm setting the, uh, as you can see, the button of mask on and to get focus. And now, I'm going to move the button of mask and align the mount. This is the next part. So, aligning two stars. Um, yeah, that's pretty high at the moment. Vega. I have to check on Stellarium, but I don't know if Vega is the prime candidate tonight. I can see another star, I think I'm going along with that. There is Deneb, but Deneb, I haven't had good luck aligning with it. I'm gonna check corner for us, where is it? Okay, I'm gonna check Vegan corner for us. And in the meantime, I'm gonna reconnect the camera because I have noticed the 294 camera when, when it's connected for a while. 
Um, it starts kind of getting black damage for some reason. As you can see, it got light again. It's totally normal because even my new one does this. Even the old one. Okay, I think it's a characteristic of the tonight of all sensor. It's kind of a weird sensor. we move according to the directions and there is Vega and you bring it to the center as possible don't worry for it to be perfect it doesn't have to be perfect no matter what people will tell you if it's close enough but try to get it close you know I'm gonna recheck focus hmm I'm glad I'm rechecking focus because it's slightly off. As you can see now, it's perfect. So the the lesson here: recheck focus. Get the button of mask off, and with an acromat, you kind of know that you are out of focus. Because when you see the stars kind of with the reddish halo with an arrow and you are out of focus. I hope Corniforos is not in the Meridian Flip, I don't think so. Because it's pretty high at the moment. Ah, okay. It's supposed to be here. I think it's this one. But what do I say? If you are a viewer of my channel, don't rely on just your instinct. Recheck. If it's. Because, you know, the mount sometimes get crazy. And it's perfect, perfect centering. I don't have to move with anything yet. That's it. Alignment done. Now, I have to check um, the coordinates of the cave nebula. Excuse the noise tonight, because there are some children here um, playing <laughs> on the rooftops. So, if you hear some shouting, that's why. Okay, coordinates. So, we go to utility. Um, or not utility. User objects, sorry. Celestial objects. And... Because you can save these for, for the next time. So, array. 2257. Zero six, because sharpless objects are not listed in the catalogs for some reason. So you have to do this manually. You go on Google and type the object and coordinates. And save for next time. I haven't checked uh, the guiding yet. Now that I think of it, I should. But should be good. I haven't touched the guide scope yet. So. Should be calibrated, I hope. I hope I don't get burned. Alright, now push to assistant, find, choose the third one, find the target so it will find target according to the sin scan. And we are pretty close. Test shot. Ten seconds. Let's see what comes out. If I see redness in the center or something like that, and I should be there. Yeah, I can see something here. So I'm pretty sure I'm on target. So we go to PhD tool. Connect equipment. The camera is connected already. Oh, 
All right. Start guiding, start exposure, sorry. Okay, it's good, focus good. Because I bumped the, the guy's scope around, so I, I'm... I'm... Uh, I'm afraid that I have touched the focus or something, but it looks good. And I'm gonna see what RMSR I get if, if the RMSR is decent, like below one RMS or something like that, one golden. And I'm not getting very good at Sennar. I'm gonna bump it to 1.5 seconds. Is the gain because the image is a bit grainy. No, I don't think that's no, no, no. Bring it up again. Um, because when this number gets too low, it will start losing the stars. And I'm gonna. Just a bit these settings because last time, last time it was very windy and I had to adjust these settings. I think I'm going to leave it at 2 seconds and see how it goes. I'm going to take a 2 minute sub. Oops. And we'll see what comes out. Okay, here are the first 2 subs. As you can see, the cave nebula is here in the center. It's very dim still, obviously. And look at this guiding, how beautiful it is tonight. This is what you want. Pretty smooth lines. And I reduce the aggressiveness because there is no wind. And I'm loving this guiding tonight. So cool. When it all works out, it's very cool. It also seems like that the flats work tonight. Um, I did like 50% histogram. And they seem to flatten the feed and remove the dust mode, so that's pretty cool as well. Because the 294 camera is really a pain to do the flats with. So I'm, I'm really happy that they worked. And the image is still pretty, pretty noisy, as expected. It will get less and less noisy with every exposure. do some dithering and it will get less noisy with dithering as well because if you don't, you don't dither uh, the target is still pretty low so I'm not sure if that that is obviously not helping as well because if you don't do dithering you will get walking noise which is horrible Now it went up a bit because it did that, but it will eventually stabilize again and go below uh, to the amount it was before. The Adventure GTI is a bit weird, that when you did there, it has sometimes a massive jump after the dithering and guiding, but I don't know if that's normal or not. I've been told that's normal. Especially with cheaper mounts, like the GTI is not expensive compared to other mounts. So, you're not gonna get perfect, perfect stuff, you know. And to show you how hot it is, like not to show you, but before I turned it on the cooler, it was 33 degrees at night. That's how hot the weather is at the moment. I 
I sure hope these hot pixels go away. I have used darks, but I don't know. They should be matched the darks that I'm using. Because I'm using the 250. Because I'm using 120 seconds and 250 gain. But I don't know. They should be matched though. So I am 36 minutes in. And as you can see, is the cave nebula in the middle here. I had to restart the stack and take uh, another darks. I'm using um, 120 seconds exposure and 300 gain, and it seemed to lower the noise quite a bit. Although I do still see some walking noise. But, uh, you know. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna um, go to sleep and leave it running hopefully all night. I don't know if it will, um, it will run all night, but we will see. Okay, so at the moment I am two hours in. Uh, I, I could have got them more, but I had some issues um, while, while imaging, but um, I dropped some frames and what you know, stupid stuff. Um, astrophotography as usual. Um, looks pretty good. As you can see, the cave nebula in the middle. And the guiding is going good, but before I had uh, some issues, it went all over the place. Because uh, since the telescope is a bit long, and it wasn't balanced in all directions, and I moved the counterweights, and now it balanced okay. And it's tracking better, I guess. Astrophotography is full of this, these things. Sometimes. Right, so I'm at the end of the night. I got uh, just above three hours. Um, this was one of those nights that whatever was going wrong went wrong. So this hobby is like that. So I expected if you're going to get into this hobby, everything will go wrong. I'm gonna check what I have on Serial quickly. to see what day that I have. Alright, no, not bad, but to be honest, not great as well. I expected a lot more, since I expected a lot more data, but you know, we're what we, with what we have. And I will process it and show you the final image later. I hope you enjoy the, the videos I'm doing. Um, the sky was clear, it's a shame, it was it didn't go uh, that good, but it's uh, to be expected, nothing, nothing will go perfect, but it's totally normal.